Welcome, everybody, to the Think Different Podcast. Get your non-sponsored Zevias out. We have another episode every week. Mm. Ah, Good, huh? Tastes like candy. Welcome, everyone, to the podcast with former Apple retail employees here to talk about Apple news and stuff. We have so many channels. We are a podcast. We are a training channel. Go check out our YouTube. We have really cool Memoji pictures on our Instagram. We are all over the world. And we are very close to 900 subscribers. We are that close, ladies and gentlemen. And when mm-hmm. we hit the 1,000, oh my God, the party we are going to have. We will invite every Apple employee to this podcast so that we can celebrate 1,000 gigs. But. Until then, I am Will. I am the former Apple specialist and owner of WVProductions.com, of course, where you can get all of your wedding videos done by yours truly. But I'm not alone, because even though I was a creative and a genius, I have the man who was a creative for so long. He is the former Apple creative, the retired book publisher, the soccer mom recorder, Jurassic Park owner, black coffee drinker, juror number 12, the Mai Tai Pool, retirement home president, the keto trout drummer, Mr. Frank Fox here. Hey, how are you doing, man? Yeah, so how, how many times, how long were you at your pool today? Oh, well, I got out there about 8.30 and I came in about 6. Do you have like waterfalls and stuff like too? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice little, you know, little hot, all well, the hot tubs, uh, it's there, but I don't know how the heater on. Oh, how, how do you how do you deal with that? I just don't know how you deal with that. You know, hey, we all have to across the bear you know <laughs> now i gotta ask are kids allowed at your pool no i don't have any kids well i mean there are but you share this pool or no, no this no. is your own place it's, oh okay it's, it's just just me my wife and my sister are here well you know what fine you know you doesn't invite me down that's fine well hey you said you were coming to florida i am in september yes Oh, we'll see. We'll be home by then. Oh, uh, all right. Well, <laughs> yeah. September's hurricane weather, man. You don't want to. It's hurricane season. I am you the man. To see, when it comes September. to me, I am so good at getting around hurricanes. I have been down to Orlando so many times. There was only one time we were at the edge of a hurricane, and we survived. But it was pretty rough. Uh, I remember I was in a very big wave, and I crashed down so hard. And this is I was probably like twelve something like that, and then I didn't, uh, let's just say I went out of the water after that one. That one hurt. So, well, we won't be doing that anytime soon, but I'm very good at avoiding hurricanes. That's the bottom line. All right. Okay. Well, let's talk about today's episode. So we're going to talk about Apple news uh, that's happened, uh, a couple of small things, but also we wanted to give review time. That's right. We want to go back to reviews, but not the Apple Store reviews. We actually want to get reviews from people who worked at Apple. So we have Glassdoor reviews of one positive, one negative from each of us, just to talk about the pros and cons of working at Apple Store and see what other people said, because you always hear what we have to say, and we always talk <laughs> positive about our experience most of the time, but... We wanted to get both sides of the uh, equation. Well, why don't you Why don't you tell them what Glassdoor is? Yeah, so Glassdoor uh, is a job seeking website, but also it provides more information about certain jobs, including salary, uh, the average, like how long someone spends there, and it's just a way for employers, people who used to work for these companies, to give a review of their experience. Okay. Is that good? Was that good? Yeah, that's okay. very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about Apple News for this following Friday. This one we actually talked about a while ago, but now they actually have been sentenced. So there were perpetrators of a 1.5 million gift card scheme. And they were finally sentenced to a combined eight years in federal prison for this story kind of broke a long time ago. We did talk about it, but two gentlemen yeah. basically stole what we call Isaac systems or point of sale or easy pay. That is what we call them. They were renamed to Isaacs. I remember they had a competition about that. Yeah. And someone put Isaac down and that person's a moron for making that decision. But bottom line is that they also have to pay $1.26 million in restitution for Apple. Yeah. That's uh, so let's talk. 
And, and the scheme was that they loaded gift cards into Apple's passbook, an application that generates the QR codes for the value of the gift cards, sent screenshots of those codes to his accomplice, which, uh, which would then use them to purchase thousands of dollars of Apple products from all different stores in New York. And I think this guy was in Arizona. So it was a scheme. And actually, I think there's another person involved, but they have uh, not revealed who that was. But clearly, all these guys, one of them at least had to work for Apple for this to happen. So it's in here. They said the defendants thought their multi-million dollar fraud would go unnoticed simply because they targeted a trillion dollar company. Right. They were sorely mistaken. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that so that was an interesting case that we read this week. Another one, which I thought is kind of in line to what I've been saying for a while on here is that. The Apple Store, and this is how it was written. The Apple Store genius gives a coding class to no one in a viral TikTok. So a TikTok went out of an Apple, it says an Apple genius is giving a coding class, but nobody's paying attention to it. They literally have this guy in front of a screen. He's talking about coding, but no one is literally there watching it. So it's not a genius. It's likely a creative that's doing this. Right, right. Let's get that straight. But Boston, bottom line is that he is talking and doing classes without anybody paying attention to it. And this is in a big Apple store. Well, you know, I have to say that, that that's, I would not say that that's abnormal. Um, you know, we've done sessions where nobody was there, signed up for it. So one of the things we would try to do is to go through the session and hopefully attract some customers that were in the store yep and introduce them to whatever it is we were trying to teach so i I don't know that that's that far out of the ordinary other than the fact that it's a big screen and you know it's a bigger store it's not like one of our small screen stores which by the way You know, Apple is criticized for as it is regarding having this small screen inside of these stores when you can go to these bigger stores that have a full flat video screen. And my plan is to do a whole video on an Apple Creative and what has happened to it. And this is a perfect example of something that really needs to be addressed immediately because these people are going to be out of jobs. I don't think. Well, <clears throat> well let's say this. I would say they're not going to be out of job, but they're going to be moved to a different position. Well, I mean, let's face it: the mall stores are always envious of the standalone stores that are designed to have, let's call it, a conference room or a huge big screen TV where the creatives can conduct the class and have a huge screen for their audience now the stores in the mall obviously weren't designed for that so Mm -hmm. what they've tried to adapt is to have these sessions on a fairly large what 50 inch uh tv very big with it with a table um that you could have six or eight individuals around and you could conduct the session that way. One of the problems that we had though was the residual noise from the other part of the store. You know, um, whereas the bigger stores, it's in a quiet room. So everything's kind of focused on what's being taught. In a mall store, there's what's being taught and everybody else (laughs) talking at the same time so i don't know if they're ever going to be able to address that issue but i don't think they will honestly i don't think it could be possible uh so that's just a a, a story i thought that was interesting because it's really a sentiment of how i feel about where the apple creative has gone and i i could swear to god if they brought one to one back i guarantee you it would make a big difference but that's a subject for another day and then finally apple actually already announced their wwdc for 2022 uh taking place june 6th through the 10th they have not said what day it is however it will be a free event like it was last year and there is going to be no in-person gathering. 
Yeah, I'm a little sad about that, but hey, I'm not surprised know. by that. I'm not. No, I'm not. I, uh, no, I, I can't say I was surprised about it, but still, I was. Eh, I just missed that. Not I that know. I attended any of those, but it was nice to see that huge developer base. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, it, it is what it is, as they say. Uh, that's quite a early announcement. We're we're talking months away from this yeah uh, so it's quite a long time to you know wait for it. but i'm hoping apple really does something big with their software especially ipad os it really needs to be separated from this iphone look it really has to i hope they can find a way but right now they haven't really found a way hmm. that's it see his silence tells me everything why do you think why do you think that's such a deterrent because it needs to be there needs it needs to be a there needs to be pro apps on there, like real pro oh, apps. Well, okay, but but I don't think. See, I think part of the appeal of the iPad is that you can go from your phone to your iPad, and everything pretty much looks the same. You already know how to operate. Now, the fact that you want to add pro apps to it, well, that's fine. Okay. Um, right, and that's what I think they need to do, especially when they have these fast chips in there. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the look and feel of the... No, well, I think uh, the OS still needs to be a little different than the iOS, but but try to maintain everything the same. They're on their mm-hmm. way. Like Universal control is a great method of uh, something that the iPhone can't do, like something that the iPhone can't do. That's what I'm mm-hmm. kind of looking for. Or like having the second display be available. Those are like the little things that the, that can help. Compared to the iPhone, they got to do more of those things. Yeah, but do you think they're? But but those are things that are more for the um, I'll say the advanced user rather than the common user. That's fine. Normal user. I'm sure that's a feature you have to turn <laughs> on. So I'm I'm right. That's fine. I totally get that. I completely agree. So maybe you should have. An iPad Pro with Pro features. Well, put them on there then. <laughs> well, I'll I, it, can't, it can't just be hardware. <laughs> it can't just be hardware though. It, right, you know, right, I mean, if right. you go, if I mean, I would never buy a Pro. I, I could never imagine unless I was an artist. I could never imagine buying a Pro ever. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. But if the iPad Pro had Final Cut Pro, had uh, Logic. Yeah, but the, but it wouldn't matter to me because the MacBook Air has the same thing. Okay. Not the MacBook Air. I'm sorry. The iPad Air has the same thing. It has an M1 chip in there. It's got the same yeah. chip. So it wouldn't mm. matter to me. Now, iPad, I wouldn't buy the regular iPad. That would definitely lead me away towards it. But that's that's my point. It's, just, it's got to do something big-time software. Something that distinguishes the models in line one yep. from the other, other than size. That's correct. All right, so let's move on to the glass door today. So we both picked out different opinions based on some employees, and we're going to read some of the pros and cons to this. And the first one I'm going to start off with a negative because we have to go with a negative. Uh, this person worked there more than one year ago, and they were a product specialist. And on the headline, it read, Assistant Manager and Store Manager made me hate working for Apple ever again. That's pretty hard to do, but let's see what he tells. So there are pros and cons that they usually do, and there's also like an advice to management, and this could be anonymous, by the way. Uh, The pros is that he had, and this is very surprising, he said this, I had great work-life balance. You get benefits as a full or part-timer, pay is great, they offer snacks, food, and you get frequent breaks to take a moment to yourself. That was the, and then the cons. The store manager in the Atlanta GA stores created something called a scorecard, which made it, which made working at the Linux mall very difficult. It was very competitive field, even if it didn't seem like it. There were a lot of sources giving backhanded compliments, cherry picking Apple, uh, cherry picking customer sales, and even doing sexual favors to stay high on the scorecard. A lot Mm. of associates were very unhappy about how things were being done, and all they did was stress about the scorecard, even outside of work. Associates felt like they couldn't give feedback on how they were being treated, uh, 
Because at any moment, you could be pulled aside and and be told you're not doing well on your scorecard. Suddenly, the higher-ups are keeping a more watchful eye on you than they should when dealing with the sales issues. They try to make it seem that they're on your side when you need help with someone, I'm sorry, with something, and should have gone to them sooner. Yet, they went to several leads and experts before the issues, and they still look at you like you don't know what you're doing. They barely know their associates when they think they do. And then their advice was to get rid of the scorecard. There are a lot of illegal and disgusting things uh, associates doing things to stay high on. And frankly, I don't think the original creator of Apple would be proud knowing you're implementing a toxic work tactic. Mind your scorecard doesn't even exist at other Apple locations outside of Atlanta. That's what I was going to say. I don't understand what that means. I'm yeah. guessing uh, that is probably metrics. Do you think he's talking about metrics? Oh, it might be, but but like a scorecard. I mean, I mean, uh, maybe sale amount of sales you make. Yeah, or... I mean, well, I thought didn't they have quote like when you were part of the business team? Didn't you have to? Uh... Well, you had to get a certain amount of leads. You had to get a certain amount of Apple right. Care. You know, back in the day, we had to try to sell ProCare and One to One and Dot Mac. It was a lot worse for us back in the day. Right, right. And the Apple Care wasn't physical damage coverage. So think of how hard right. it was for us to do that. You know, imagine was, today. I mean, they would talk about it, but they didn't really. I mean, at least in my experience, I mean, there was nothing that nobody said was going to. Uh, your job was in jeopardy because you didn't do well in uh, well as a product specialist remember the goal is that they do have to meet numbers now yeah. they are i have heard that the numbers now are something they're looking at as far as if you're not getting enough business introductions or you're not getting uh, enough apple cares or you know a bunch of random things so hmm. I, that's what i think the scorecard is and the whole thing about sexual favor that that's a little yeah, that's I don't know a bit what much. that means. Unless the manager is like a female and a male, like like some, I, I don't know. I don't know where well, that's coming from. I'll tell you what. If something like that, if I was ever confronted with something like that, I, that's something I would go right to corporate with. I wouldn't even waste my time with anybody in the store or, you know, the district manager. Or anything. I'd go right to corporate with it. But, yeah. yeah, so I thought that was a very interesting negative response, and I could... Like I said, I could see how someone could be, you know, forced into trouble based on the uh, based on the metrics that they're not meeting. Yeah, but still, I think overall uh, on this particular one, um, I would suggest that they. If they have evidence of everything that they're saying, and I'm sure they do, but uh, I would, I would contact headquarters. It, yeah, I would agree. I mean, that, I mean, if they do something very unique to that store that is not around, and I could see people doing that, or if Apple implemented it, maybe to some stores, maybe as like a trial program, it could be that too. So, hey, you and I both know somebody that was a manager that was fired for asking. Uh, an employee to babysit. I mean, uh, what was that? No, that one is new to me. Yeah, that was in uh, QB. Really? This yeah. is news to me. I did not know about this. Was I there for this manager? This she she opened the store. Oh, see, I wasn't there for that one. I remember the whole staff change uh, because yeah. of that. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, that's nice to hear. <laughs> uh, Frank, Frank, which are you going to start with a negative or positive? Well, actually, this is a three star. So I'd have to say it's a, it's a negative, but I don't, I mean, if it's a negative, I don't know why they gave it three stars. It seems kind of strange to me, but the, um, the headline is seems great from the outside but no work-life balance. So, mm -hmm. And this is from March, 2022, an anonymous employee. Now the, the pros, and they bullet pointed these, 
25% discount on one of each Apple products once a year. Discounts on all things Apple, cables, cases, Apple Music, iCloud Store. Looks good on resume. Mm -hmm. The cons, the schedule here is horrible. The main reason I quit, schedules are never locked down, and they mostly use part-time employees to cover the hour-long breaks for the full-time employees. So in my, my case, they had me come in five random days a week for five-hour shifts. I argued with them for months to go down to four shifts per week, just longer hours, and they fought me on it every time. You can, you can only advance slightly. I started as a tech specialist and then to a tech expert and finally genius. But after that, there's really nowhere else to go. You can try another role like a creative, someone who teaches the classes or selling or stock. Favoritism is terrible here. So advice to management. You'd keep far more employees if you worked with people to set up uh, even some kind of a locked-in schedule. My entire experience here would have been so much better even uh, if even two or three days a week management worked with me to pick a handful of day times that would work for me. People have lives outside of work. That was... Uh, okay. uh, now, Frank, have, now, Frank, there were... Like, you did have a set couple of days right am i correct well that's what i was just going to say it in <laughs> now when i worked at apple they asked me when are you available now in retail let's let's kind of frame this any retail establishment you have to work some sort of a weekend yeah of course I mean, it's, it, it's just the way it is. Right. Now, in my case, they said I said I could work a Saturday or a Sunday, and then I worked, uh, I think it was uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and had Thursday. And I actually, I, I scheduled it so I worked Sunday, so I had Thursday, Friday, and Saturday off. If they needed me to cover somebody, if one of the creatives or something called out and I was available, I would come in and, and work. But I had a hard schedule, um, meaning hard or locked in times. Yeah. I would work 8.30 to 5 every day. Mm -hmm. um, so now the one thing that I noticed on this, he in the pros, he, he listed three pros or this person listed three pros. Didn't mention anything about the health benefits for part-time no. employees. Didn't mention anything about tuition rebates, 401k, no. stock plan purchase. None of that, which all of that you get. So if I was to weigh the pros to the con of a flowing schedule, as a part-time employee, I'd have to say I'd live with the schedule. Right. And, and I... As far as I was going to say, there was a day on Tuesdays, I because I had like volleyball or Thursdays I had bowling, they would work with my schedule regarding those days specifically. Right. I told them I could work till 7 or I could work till 6. So I did, I was able in my store, not, not I definitely didn't get a weekend off, I can tell you that, but I, but I will tell you my well, Did finagle, you work both Saturday and Sunday? Sometimes I did, sometimes right. I did, but I will tell you that I did request off a lot of days because as a wedding videographer, I need to have Friday or Saturday right. off. So right. Right. a lot of times I would put my PTOs in way in advance. And of course that got me some heat with my fellow employees that wanted to take off because I already requested it. So, yeah. and that, and that would happen frequently, but that's how my life was planned. So, and that's the profession I decided to get in because Apple wasn't paying me enough. I had to get something separate. Right. You but, know, and they, I still do it today. I mean, you would say that they work with you, right? Yes. I will Fine tell you there large. were times that I did get a little pushback on the amount of times I'm requesting. I've had conversations about it. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not fair for other people. I'm like, well, if they have a day that I wish I had off, I, I you know, you know, if, yeah. if they really, really wanted to be off for something, just clot sick. Yeah. Just don't post well, anything on social media.
And then the other thing, there's a, as a con, it says favoritism is terrible here. Now, I do I think, see that. Well, I got to think you'd have to define favoritism. If you like, for example, um, we had a creative who was hands down the best accessibility creative in probably tri-state area. Mm -hmm. Hands down, absolutely the best. The problem was he was unreliable. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, accessibility is a highly uh, Dream. trained yeah. area. So when you have somebody that's hearing impaired, visually impaired, speech impaired, um, or just in general, they need knowledge on the accessibility features of anything Apple. This person knew it flat out cold, hands down. However, if you schedule a session and then that person doesn't come into work that day, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Now, we tried to cover as best we could, but there were some times when, you know, we just didn't have it. So you had to do, well, let's learn together kind of thing, which just became kind of awkward. So... How much is that person worth? Right. You know, management has to make those decisions. So right. I don't know if it's favoritism or I don't think favoritism is the right word. I think management is looking at a situation and saying, okay, I have an average employee who has a good base knowledge, shows up all the time, and I have a person that has superior knowledge, but is inconsistent with their attendance. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to take? Right. A another thing to add on there about the growth, uh, that is something that is tough. Uh, you can go to another role, but as far as like growing, but we definitely know people that are in management roles right now. In fact, people I started with are now managers at Apple, but they put a lot of time in into it. You know, they got, right. lead well, they got lead positions, which then led to a manager position, which is the right way out. Like for me, I never want to be a manager in anything because I hate right. that responsibility. So right. I won't, I won't ever, uh, ever become a manager for that reason. I'm happy without it. You know, you know? I mean, it, it's like, you know, with me, I, in the corporate environment, and I had I managed a department of uh, eight people, and I, I came to Apple part time, and it was like I just want to go in, do my job, and have fun, and I'll see you. Because depending on the store, you know yourself. At an Apple store, you could be managing anywhere from eighty to three hundred people. Yeah, I don't know how many people are at uh, Fifth Avenue, but oh god, uh, I don't want to know. You know, so I mean, it, it 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 can get now. Anytime you have to manage that many personalities, right? Uh, it becomes problematic, and and it's it's not fun. Right. Let's continue to something that's a uh, a little more positive on on this note. Uh, so one of the positive uh, was a five star. It was a former employee of five years ago in Cal in uh, actually another Atlanta store. So. Uh, very rewarding, limited growth potential at retail level. So the pros, amazing company that does care about its employees, teaches a lot of personal growth that applies towards a lot of jobs outside of retail. I agree with that. Cons, personal experience is widely dependent on managers and how they track performance, as well as I worked in different stores and left some stores solely due to managers. They track every possible performance from customer reviews to how many times you talk to a business team to uh, to repair rates for certain iPhone models, repair time, appointment time can get very exhausting. So that's actually pretty on the money. Yeah, I, I you know from my experience, I mean you know you were creative, so it's a little different than what I deal with sometimes. But yeah, yeah he, I, I mean you had the time, uh, and he didn't mention by the way great benefits and paid vacation in the pros. I didn't say that, so. Uh, but I will say that there are times with the performance reviews, sometimes c they're going solely based off of, you know, customer reviews. And that's like the number one thing that they go off of when, you know, there was a time as a genius, I was on review. I almost got fired. Yeah. 
And I was like, you're really going to get rid of me after how many years I've been here? Are you out of your mind? Like, like just because of what you see on the reviews is the whole story? You You know, know, I was not happy about that. Oh, I don't don't blame you. I, you know, as far as the reviews are concerned, the customer reviews, the ratings, when I initially started at Apple as a specialist, you had that customer from the minute they walked through the door to after you set up their machine and they left their whole experience was with you now that's changed over the years a specialist will sell them the product and then take them to another area and hand them off to another group that sets the machine up now there are different points of view on this, but my point of view is this. They could have a great sales experience, okay? And when they get to the setup, whether it's a phone or a computer, maybe that person at the setup table kind of falls down because they're trying to deal with four or five people at the same mm-hmm. time. Yeah, okay? you're, passed al- so, you're passed along. And so I always wanted them to break down the uh, customer review into two parts, maybe three parts, if you know, depending upon what you're doing. One to deal specifically with the salesperson, and the other to deal with setup. Mm-hmm. And they could very easily track who did what. And then let's say they had sometimes a, uh, setup be a little tough. You're not really signing into anything or scanning anything, so well, I think that'd be a little tough. But because a lot of times, you know, you, you get a good review, and then they'd say, "Oh, the setup person sucked," and so you'd end up getting a, a, a three. Mm-hmm. You know, and the only right. thing they really counted was the the best score. Mm-hmm. That that's what helped the specialist. Anything below that hurts. Yeah. Count. Yeah. Also, another thing I like I like about the headline is that very rewarding, limited growth potential at a retail level, and I love that because that pretty much sums up I think why I left too. Uh, you know, and especially that it said personal growth that applies towards a lot of jobs outside of retail. I could tell you, I use a lot of my lead learning out or my Apple. Uh, the Apple those steps tools. of service, those yep. tools in companies I worked at. And when I worked mm-hmm. at Sirius XM specifically, you talk about a company that does not care about that kind of stuff, which is not the values that I learned and the skill set that I learned uh, mm-hmm. with with my skills. So then you hired me for the wrong thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's just me. But let's get to the final review. Yours is kind of long. So let's okay. talk about that one uh, that was well, a this- positive review. This is from January of uh, 2022. It's uh, from the Washington, D.C. store. It's a specialist. And it's entitled, For My Situation, It Has Worked Perfectly. And this is a five-star review. Now, the pros, working at Apple is, is quite the experience. The energy is undeniable. The people at the retail level where I worked are some of the best I've ever met. Everyone is so different, but everyone possesses the same quality that they truly want to help. I've never been denied genuine assistance, and they have maintained a practice of safety first approach to COVID, which I appreciate every day. Um, I'm a part-time employee while also being a full-time student. They are tremendously supportive with college schedules, and as long as your available availability meets the needs of the business, the company is more than flexible. Apple knows I will not be with them beyond the next year or two, but they continue to push me to accomplish all I can and invite me to buy, to be true uh, to, to myself and every day. It's a terrific experience. And if you get the opportunity, I highly recommend giving it a shot. Cons, as was mentioned in others, limited growth for part-time employees. They seem to reserve most advancement for full-time employees committed to Apple for the first day of all future. Uh, advice to management, roles that allow vertical growth would be really appreciated by the people not in full-time roles. 
That's kind of tough. I don't know how you could do that though, when you know they're not going to be. I mean, I would say you're, but again, you're you're kind of the exception because you did go to a creative from a right. from a specialist. So, right. and they, and again, they have to. The only way they were able to gain a creative was the amount of bookings that one to one got. That that was part of why oh, you yes. became a creative. Right. So we and, you grew that role, and you grew that because based on the demand. See, and, and the other thing is my situation was a little different um, in that I was doing this because I loved the products and I got an opportunity to work for them. I was doing it um, not as a college student, okay? Uh, and so everything that they offered was to me, I was in shock. I mean, from coming from the corporate world, where, I mean, it was different. It was really, really different. And I, I you know, that's why I, I guess I sound like I sing the praises of Apple. And, and not that they're perfect, because I'm sure if you go to the corporate level, you have a lot of the same things that I dealt with in my corporate job. Um, but at retail, in my opinion, if, if you are looking for a retail position, that you want to do while you're going to school, you're not going to find a better company that's going to give you these kind of benefits. I yep. mean, are there some downsides? Yeah, but no job is perfect, guys. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I think a very interesting uh, take on it. Again, for a part timer, I don't think there's much growth you could do as a part timer. I mean, they know you're not kind of sticking around. So what's the? the it's better to them to help grow your skills more so than maybe a, a role advancement. Right. You know, it'd be exactly. kind of tough. Similar to what you mentioned earlier, you, you take what you learn in Apple, the Apple steps of service, all of that. You take that into your whatever your field of study is uh -huh. and use those and you would be amazed at what you can do but you're going to find if you go into a corporate environment that a lot of people don't care about that they'll, right. they'll tell you one thing right to your face and turn around and do something totally different that's true so, Let's, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was what a salary makes. I wanted to show one between a specialist and a genius. So a specialist right now, on average, makes about $20 an hour. That's what they st have stated here on the website. Uh, mm. They even break it down based on white, Asian, Hispanic. I thought that was uh, quite an interesting uh, little thing. But I think, it's I think it's different depending on where you are. If you like work with a New York store and you work overnight, that might probably be a little more. Uh, but that's what they say that the average pay. And I think that's about right. I think when I started there, I was working maybe like, I think I started at 15 an hour or 12 an hour. I forget how much. I think it was 12 an hour when I first started there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously things have changed since then. But 20 seems about right. And then the genius, they say, makes on average about 50K a year between $24 and $28. So... Well, all I can say is when I left there, I was making almost $24 an hour. Okay. So, I mean, like, you know, I, I hate to beat this dead horse, but it's a part-time job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, come on. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know how else to explain it. I mean, if you look, if you can get in, are there things that you're going to have to deal with no matter where you go with personalities, management you didn't get along with? I mean, I have some of those stories as well. But you know what? You just kind of grin and bear it. And in some cases, you move to another Apple store or they move on or you, they find out that this particular person isn't working out in management and then right. they're... All the time, one day you go in there, not there. Yep. I mean, I had, I felt like my, in the free old store, the general, the manager of that store just did not like me at all. And then when Michelle came aboard, uh, that was a completely different story uh, regarding 
my growth with her, you know, from one manager. So I, I definitely think a, a store manager does make a humongous difference in the quality of of, of what they feel your your value is. So that that's what I wanted to say. But also, yeah, but that's, I, no, that's yeah. no different than when you went to uh, XM Radio, right? Right. Oh yeah. no, it was. T- it, it, but again, the layout's not the same, so I can't compare it. I just know that when one person's in charge of multiple buildings, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You need someone that needs to be uh, in charge of every building and can make decisions that don't require one person to answer. Right. That's just me. Um, and you there. know the the other thing that not I to mention, was, and not to mention, they were going to more contractors than they were in full time yeah. employees. So um, a lot of times when we first started if a customer came in and uh, I don't know had a particular problem this the specialist could say well you know I think we should give this person a new cord or whatever it is and the manager would say well if that's what you feel go ahead mm-hmm. and, and, you know in some cases they would give the specialist the authority to I'll say do the right thing. Right. So and and to to cap it off, you know, everyone just got a 10% raise working at Apple, at least that's what someone told me. That's a pretty significant raise to get uh for the yeah. inflation that we're dealing with right now. And so I told my, my one of my, someone that works at Apple now about a job opportunity where I'm at and what he makes now is superior to that. Oh, so go. now, of course, I have the Monday through Friday. I have the, right. the, the you know, I have 20 days of vacation. He does not have that. But but I could see why, you know, pay wise, he's probably making more than me. He probably yeah. is. He's been there a long well, time. And it is very hard to get someone, you know, to leave that environment to go get maybe a downgraded pay to you know to that but i think the i think that this glass door needs to be changed because i think there is inflation that apple added to all the employees that will jump this up so i think like if he got 10 percent, i would bump that up 10 percent then to what everyone was making hey listen i i mean as far as pay scale and Kind of what's required. I mean, if you're the technical person like you are, uh, and you had that ability as a genius, I mean, they'll certainly give you the work. And you know, they used to send you to Cupertino for training or Austin, Texas. They sent you're me sure. to Austin, Texas. Uh-huh. So, I mean, listen, for a part time again, a part time employee, they're going to uh-huh. send you to Austin, Texas for a week. Right, but they haven't done that in three years, so you got to well, remember that. Now. That that experience still, is not there. We were extremely lucky to get yeah. the experiences that we got yep. there. Not to mention, I got to go out twice, by the way. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And, remember yeah, of course, that. of course, because I had to bring you home like thir- thirteen thousand cups. So, <laughs> but that's our episode this week. A little long, but I thought it'd be good to talk about Glassdoor a little bit about like the experiences that some other people have. That'd be a good subject to to talk about but we appreciate all the feedback that we're getting i really would enjoy go please give us a like on youtube listen to our podcast uh give us a review we really do appreciate it everyone that listens in to this podcast uh so that is it for this week we will be back in two weeks because of course we're on every other week podcast so i want to thank everybody and i love every single one of you hang in there we'll see you later